Okay. So, today we will discuss the few, uh, a basic topology on the set of real numbers and first we will discuss what is one one correspondent then we will go for the countable and uncountable concept of the countable and uncountable sets. The two sets A and B are said to have one to one are said to be in one to one correspondence in one to one correspondence if there exist if there exist a one one mapping one one mapping from a on to b on to b and then if a and b are finite then we say the cardinality of a and cardinality b is the same if a and b are finite sets then the cardinality then the cardinality or cardinal number of a is the same as the cardinal number of b cardinal number of b but if a is infinite then there is no uh, sense of talking the number of element in the set both so in that case when a is in B are infinite set, then instead of saying the cardinality is the same, we say they have a one to one correspondence. That is a more meaningful than saying the numbers are same. Okay. So, this is one. and the relation which we have, if we put the relation, suppose A is rated to B, A is rated to B, if A is a one to one correspondence, A is one to one corresponds dense to be then this relation the relation this relation is this relation is obviously is reflexive symmetric and transitive and transitive So, it is a reflex, it is a equivalence relation. So, it is an equivalent. So, it is an equivalence relation. So, we also say, so we can say, we can say that A is equivalent to B, A is equivalent to B when they have, when A is one to one correspondence to B. So, so, that is the way we define. Now, using the concept of the one to one correspondence, we can now define the finite set, infinite set, countable and uncountable set. The definitions is for, for any positive integer, for any positive integer, say positive integer say n, let J n represent the sets having the element 1, 2, 3 say up to n. The first n in natural number of positive integers and let J is the set of all positive integers 1, 2, 3 and so on. This is the set of all positive integer. Positive integers okay then for any set a for any set a for any set a we define we say a is finite a is a finite set is finite set if a is equivalent to j n for some n for some n uh, obviously once it is equivalent to some n then n is fixed 
So, j n is finite, the number of the terms is n only. So, a will also be finite, 1 to 1 correspondent and the set will be a finite set. Empty set in particular considered to be a finite set. So, in particular empty set phi is considered to be considered to be finite. Then a set B, a set A is said to be infinite if A is not finite. In fact, this definition we can further uh, modify it and we get a better way of defining the infinite set in, uh, in, uh, in the next uh, uh, top uh, next part when we discuss about countability. Okay. So, a is, a is finite means if it is not infinite, uh, a is infinite means if it is not finite and see a is uh, countable if a is equivalent to j that is there is a one to one correspondence between the elements of a and the j all we can define a mapping from set of positive integer to a which is 1 1 then such a uh, set a is said to be a countable set. So, okay. so, this j we have though started from 1 to n 1 to infinity we can also take j from 0 1 to n with starting the point x 0 0 corresponding the point x 0, x 1 corresponding to point x 1 and so on. So, we can also consider the positive or non negative integers, uh, positive integers including 0. Okay. The uh, a is uncountable, a is said to be uncountable if a is neither neither finite nor countable nor countable and e we say a is at most countable a is at most countable if a is is finite or countable Finite set is also a countable set, but if the set is finite as well as also, uh, and also uh, count uh, means finite that set will uh, be considered countable, countable set is self countable. So, we say is almost countable means either uh, is finite or may be a countable set that is what countable. The countable set also known as countable sets all also known as uh, as denumerable set denumerable or enumerable sets all numerable sets okay let's take some examples we are this we say let a be the set of set of all integers a be the set of all integers okay then set of all integers uh, b uh, claim that this set of integers a is countable we claim a is countable is countable uh, it means we are able to define a one to one correspondence between the sets um, uh, of positive integer and the set of the elements a so let us define a mapping f from the set of positive integer j to a a as follows. If I take 
the image of any n under f is say n by 2 if n is even integer even positive integer and otherwise when we say n minus 1 by 2 uh, if n is odd positive integer. So, what we see here is that if we take a which is the set like uh, 0 1 minus 1 2 minus 2 3 minus 3 and so on and j which is the set of positive integer 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and so on. So, what he says is as soon as n is even it will give n by 2. So, this is related to here okay. then 4 will go to here 6 will go like this and when n is odd when n is odd then you are getting this thing this thing this thing this thing and of course 1 will go to 0. So, there is a 1 to 1 correspondence between the elements of the set a and set j. So, obviously this and this mapping is 1 1 mapping 1 1 mapping we can just check it because f is 1 1 means f of x 1 equal to f of x 2 should imply x 1 equal to x 2. So, here if it say n is even then obviously when you take f n 1 equal to f n 2 obviously n 1 comes out to n 2 similarly here when n is odd we are getting same. So, obviously f is 1 1 here. So, that is why this set of positive inte of integers is a countable set. One more thing which we can see here is a remark. what we have seen is that this a is a set of integer, but j is a set of positive integer j is a proper subset of a. So, but they are having a one to one correspondence. So, what we can say is uh, what we conclude or we observe here is in case of the infinite uh, set we can say a is infinite when a is equivalent to one of its proper subset. In case of infinite set uh, a proper subset may be equivalent to the set itself. So, in case of infinite set <coughs> a proper subset uh, a may be is equivalent to in case of infinite set say a a is equivalent to equivalent to one of its proper subset. And this is also a way to define an infinite set. We say a set is infinite if A is equivalent to one of its proper subset. So, we say and that is that is A is infinite A is infinite set if uh, infinite set if A is equivalent to equivalent to one of its proper subsets that is what ok. Now, another remark we can put it here eh, that every uh, elements of any countable set can be arranged in the form of the sequence elements of a countable set of a countable set elements of a countable set uh, may be arranged can be arranged arranged in a sequence because basically what we we have a one to one correspondence with this set of positive integer. So, corresponding to 1 we are getting x 1 corresponding to 2 we are getting x 2 corresponding to 3 we are getting. So, this form basically sequence because it is like this 
if a is any set having the elements say here these are the elements for this set a okay then j is what j is 1 2 3 and so on it has a 1 to 1 correspondence so corresponding to 1 you are getting x 1 corresponding to 2 you are getting x 2 corresponding to 3 you are getting x 3 and so on so this has a 1 to 1 correspondence with this is it not like this so we get the 1 to 1 correspondence between the set of net, uh, positive integer and the elements of the set so element of a countable set can be arranged in the form of the sequence so this is also a remark which we can use we will use it now this is a, a interesting result and uh, result says every infinite subset subset of a countable set of a countable set A is countable. Okay. So, proof is let E be an infinite set, let E be a subset of A and E is infinite. is infinite. Now, since A is since A is countable, so we can arrange the element of A in the form of sequence. So, A will have the sequence like x 1, x 2 and so on. All the elements of the set can be arranged in the form of the sequence. Okay. Now, let us construct a sequence. Construct a sequence n k of positive integers. As follow, as follows. Uh, suppose n one be the smallest positive integer, be the smallest positive integer such that x n k x n 1 is an element of E means from this n uh, 1 to 3 and so on suppose I am taking the n 1 n 1 is the smallest integer so that the first x n 1 corresponding to this x n 1 is an element means out of this the first element which you are getting is x n 1 belongs to E then assume that uh, n 1 choose in n 1 n 2 say n k minus 1 we are k is 2 3 and 4 so on these are the uh, after choosing in such a way when n 2 is greater than n 1 and such that x n 2 belongs to e and so on let us take n k now be the smallest integer be the smallest integer with the smallest integer uh, such that be the smallest integer such that n k is greater than n k minus 1 and the corresponding term of the sequence x and k belongs to E. Okay. So, now let us introduce the function f from j to E. So, if we take f of n as x of n k, f, f, f of k, let us take f of k as x of n k where k is 1, 2, 3 and so on. Then what we see here, there is a 1 to 1 correspondence between j and e, because for k is 1, x 1, x n 1 is in e, k is 2, x n 2 is in e, x n k is in e and like this. So, this is a 1 to 1 correspondence 
between between uh, e and j hence e is countable hence e is countable okay so this shows that every infinite subset of a countable set is countable okay clear is it okay so this one now here as we have seen that if a is countable we can put it in the form of a sequence x1 x2 x and all the elements we can arrange in the form of the sequence x1 x2 x n if i generalize it say why because 1 to n is basically set of positive integer so instead of this we can take the collection family of the sets also so we define like this let a and omega b sets and suppose with each element alpha of a there is associated a subset of omega which is known and suppose for each for each element element alpha belongs to a alpha a there is there is associated a subset e alpha of omega subset say e alpha subset denoted by e alpha of omega okay then the collection of all these e alpha then this collection e alpha where alpha belongs to a this collection alpha uh, is the collection of the sets is the, is the family of the sets family of sets or subsets of q subsets of omega family of subsets of omega now if we take uh, s as the union of e alpha when alpha belongs to a then this for at least one we used it. then any element belongs to this means it will be in one of the alpha e alpha like this so for at least one alpha we use that okay and in particular in particular when a is an positive integer a is the set of positive integer then s becomes union e m m is 1 to infinity and this we say it is a countable union of e m's like this so even similarly for the intersection also we can introduce so this uh, will be needed so we can just define now let <coughs> another results in uh, the sequence of the countable sets let us suppose e n e n and n is 1 to n so on be a sequence of sequence of countable sets countable sets and put and let S is the countable union of E n. S is the countable union of E n's. N is one to infinity. Then what we claim is that S is countable. Then S is countable. So a countable union of a countable set is countable. That's what this result says. Okay. Now what is E n? E n's are given to be countable. So it can be arranged in the form of the sequence. So, proof is since E n for each n, uh, since E n for each n is a countable set, countable set. So, its elements can be arranged in a form of the sequence.
in the form of sequence in the form of the sequence say x and k where k is 1 2 3 and so on k is 1 2 3 it means that is e 1 set e 1 we can arrange the form for the set e 1 we can arrange the elements like this x 1 1 x 1 2 x 1 3 x 1 4 x 1 5 x 1 6 and so on for e 2 the elements suppose we are arranging x 2 1 x 2 2 x 2 3 x 2 uh, x 2 4 x 2 5 and so on like this and e ends suppose we are arranging x n 1 x n 2 x n 3 x n 4 x n 5 and so on like this so continue this ok now let us consider the following array consider uh, consider the array array as mentioned above infinite array as shown above by arrow what is this suppose i take this arrow first uh, let us take this another pen then suppose i take this as first element this ray then i take choose this one then i take this arrow then i take this one x n 1 x n 2 uh, x 3 1 oh sorry this is like this ok x 3 1 x 3 2. So, basically this will be the x 4 1 mm, this is x 4 is wrong. So, this will be x 4 1 x 4 2. So, this ray will go this ray will go ok not this like this. So, if we continue this way that is what we are doing is we are taking up this ray like this the first element we are choosing x 1 1 the first array then second one I am taking as x 2 1 x 2 2 x 1 2 then third ray we are taking as x 3 1 x 2 2 x 2 2 x 1 3 x 1 3 and fourth one is say x 4 1 x 3 2 and then x 2 3 and then x 1 4 like this continue this. So, if we arrange this in the form of the sequence then what we get is we are getting first element second element third element and so on like this. So, in this way we are getting a one to one correspondence between the elements of this set and set of positive integer. It may so happen that some of the elements of this sequence may be repeated. Then what we can do is we can get the subset of this set. Since it is an infinite subset, so subset of this we can find out a uh, integers a uh, subset of t integer j which is also countable. So, with that it will be a one to one correspondence. We drop this uh, common element and make the correspondence with the set of positivity. So, if uh, if any two of them uh, if <laughs> any two of the any two of the sets E n have elements in common common then these will appear these will appear more than once in this arrangement in this arrangement say uh, star in this arrangement star then what we say hence there exist 
hence there is a subset of subset T of the set of all positive integers T of the set of set of all positive integers all positive integers such that such that s and t which s is equivalent to t which shows that s is at most countable that s is at most countable uh, let us see what is the meaning of this. Eh? Once we have arranged this union of this S n E 1 E 2 n, this each E n we are arranging in the form of the sequence. So, now take the array like this. So, choose the element first element 1 1, then second element x 2 1, third element x x 1 2, fourth uh, element may be the x 3 1, then x here uh, x 3 1, and this will be the x 3 1 then this array where the sum is 4 where the sum is 4. Okay. So, this one and continue. So, this has a 1 to 1 correspondence with the set of positive integer in case if suppose some elements are repeated then what we do we just drop that elements I take only once. So, that will be have a 1 to 1 correspondence with this set subset of j that is there will exist a subset T of the set of positive integer which has a 1 to 1 correspond with this set of elements of S. So, S becomes countable. Okay. Now, S may be finite or may be infinite. So, but S cannot be finite. So, we can take it to be the let us why because since E 1 since E 1 E 1 which is contained in S because S is the countable union of these E n's. So, E 1 is contained in S and E 1 is given to be infinite and E 1 is infinite because this is already given that sequence of countable sets E n's is the sequence of the countable sets which are infinite of course, each element then E is in 1 infinite then S will be infinite. So, this shows S is countable, this implies S is countable, S is countable and that is proved the result. Okay. So, this will, this is our, okay. same results we can generalize it. So, as a corollary we can say, uh, suppose A is at most countable. at most uh, countable and let for every alpha belongs to a uh, b alpha b alpha is at most countable which is a subset of omega of course at most countable then then t which is the count uh, union of b alpha when alpha belongs to a is count is at most countable at most countable means either it will be finite or infinitely countable all infinitely countable okay so that's really another results which we in this sequence we have let A be a countable set, be a countable set and let B and let B alpha B n V the set of all n tuples Z 
set of all n tuples of the say a 1, a 2, a n, where a cage these edge elements they are the elements of a cage 1, 2 say up to n <coughs> and the elements a 1, a 2 in not be and the elements elements a 1, a 2, a n need not be distinct. distinct. Then B n is countable, is countable. So, what this uh, theorem says is that if we construct a set B or V n that is B n is the set of all n tuples a 1, a 2, a n, where a cage are in a. Now, if these coordinates of this n tuples belongs to a countable set, then this collection of all n tuples will also be a countable set that is what he says. <coughs> so, in particular when you take n equal to 2, the ordered uh, set of all ordered pair where a 1 a 2 belongs to a set which is countable, then this set of for n is 2 becomes countable and this will give leads the proof for the rational number to be countable. So, let us see the proof of this first, uh, this will be proved by induction. So, what is our b 1? For n is equal to 1, b 1 is basically only single element a 1, it, it means b 1 coincide with a but a is given countable, a is given countable. So, once it is countable, so this implies that v 1 is countable, v 1 is countable. So, let us assume that up to b n minus 1 is countable. So, let us assume let, let uh, b 1, v 2, b n minus 1 is countable set. Okay. Now, we will prove for n b n. So, consider the b n b n we can put it b n in the form of ordered pair b a where what b where b belongs to b n minus 1 a tuples where b is b 1, b 2, b n, b n minus 1 and then comma a n a term is a. So, b 1 and n in a belongs to a. Okay. Clear? Now, if I fix b, then once you fix up b, it means each element of a, we are combining with b that is all. So, basically you are getting a itself, is it not? So, that is nothing but, so for every fixed b, fixed b, the set of pair, the set of pairs b a is equivalent to, equivalent to equivalent to set of b a is equivalent to a, but a is given to be countable. Hence, hence countable. So, thus b n is countable, okay. thus v n is countable, countable union of b n is the is union of union of a countable set union of countable set of countable set is a union of a countable set because a is countable and this you are fixing b n minus 1 which is also a countable. So, basically b n is the union of the countable sets b n minus 1 and a. So, it is count hence it is countable hence it is countable by the previous result. 
therefore, B n is countable. So, this proves the theorem. Now, as a particular case I told that when you fix up the n is 2, then we get the very important result that all set of rational numbers is countable. The set of set of all rational numbers rational numbers is countable. Why? What is our rational number? The set of rational number q is basically <coughs> of the form say b by a b by a we are a and b are integer integer a is not equal to 0 and the divisor of this is 1 means they do not have a common factors in it. Okay. So, this is 1 even if it is not 1 even if we do not put it say 2 by 4 1 by 2 we can take also that one. So, this is all general in this form a by b. Now, what is this? This is basically an ordered pair say b a where the order is a b by a. So, a is an integer b is also an integer and both are countable set. So, basically it is a union of the countable sets. So, the in the previous theorem in the previous theorem if we take n is equal to 2 then this shows that q is countable because b is in i which is countable a is in i which is also countable therefore it is countable so set of all now this we will uh, just give an example but uh, we will show it later uh, exercise which is we will prove it then set of all algebraic numbers algebraic numbers set of all algebraic numbers is a countable set second we can show uh, we will prove that uh, this I am leaving an example, but otherwise next we will show it also when it is okay. Uh, set of all that is uh, uh, okay. All these infinite uh, real numbers, set of real number. Oh, okay. Set A. Set A of uh, uh, all sequences, set A of all sequences, all sequences whose elements, whose elements are all digits zero and one. Zero and one, uh, all this zero one is not is uncountable set. So in fact, this result shows the second example shows. So this this example shows that uh, all these uh, infinite set uh, need not be countable. That all infinite set sets need not be countable. In fact, we will show that set of real number is not countable, set of rationals are countable, set of irrational becomes uncountable set. So, let us see the result the theorem which you form in the form of theorem proof of solution for 2 all this you can also say in the form of theorem as in uh, let us suppose a e with a countable subset of this okay let e let given uh, a be the set of set of all sequences all sequences whose elements are 
elements are say whose elements are like this all the infinite sequences all the uh, sequences uh, set of all sequences whose elements are digits 0 or 1 that is a will be a set of this type of sequence say 1 0 1 comma 1 0 comma 0 like this all may be 1 1 1 0 1 0 like this means all these sequences in fact you can well the digits are either 0 or 1 we claim that this set will be uncountable set so let let us suppose e be a proof let let e be a countable subset of a let us suppose let e be a countable countable subset of a let us take this okay okay uh, it means every e can be arranged in the form of sequence so uh, let e consist of uh, the sequences e consist of sequences say s1 s2 sn s3 and so on because this is countable so we can arrange the elements in the form of this now each s1 s2 sn we are si is this maybe few 1 0 1 1 0 0 0 and so on means L digits are are either 0 or 1 digits are 0 or 1 each is I will get now from this let us construct a new sequence s so construct a sequence construct a sequence s as follows uh, what is the way we are constructing sequence is that if the nth digit in s n if the nth digit digit in if the nth digit in s n is 1 1 then we let the nth digit n at digit of s v 0 and the vice versa means what how we are choosing is suppose s 1 s 2 s n is given sequence. So, I am taking constructing sequence s such that if the n at digit of s n is 1 then we will replace 1 by 0 it means the first term first term of this term we will look the s 1 if the first term in s 1 is 1 we will get a 0 if first term in the s n s 1 is 0 we will take it 1 similarly for second term of s 2 we look the s uh, for second term of s we look the sequence s 2 and see what is the digit whatever the digit there we will take that just opposite of means if it is 1 we will take 0 if it is 0 it is 1 it means the sequence s so obtained will differ from all the terms of the uh, of this construct uh, this set e so obviously uh, so what we see here is that uh, the sequence s sequence s differs from every every member of e member of E in at least at least uh, one place because we are constructing in such a way. So, once it is differing from each element and E is already countable we have arranged the term in the form of sequence S 1 S 2 S n and since S is not coinciding with any one of the term. So, this implies that s is not an element of e it means what but s is what but s is is an element of what a because a is the collection of all such sequences 
whose digits is either 0 and 1. So, E is a proper subset of this. This implies E is a proper subset of A, subset of A, okay. E is a proper subset of A, okay. And once we and we have already shown and it is known or it is shown that uh, it is shown that every countable subset every countable subset of A is a proper subset of A is a proper subset of A every countable subset of A is a proper subset of A this we have shown already uh, every countable subset of A is a proper subset of A. So, A cannot be countable because as soon as A is countable then the subset which you are getting must be proper. So, this shows this implies that A is A cannot be countable because if A is countable then here itself we are getting a contradiction is it not because uh, otherwise A would be a proper subset of itself otherwise A would be a proper subset of A itself would be a proper subset of A itself which is absurd which is absurd because a set cannot be a proper a set will be a subset of itself but cannot be a proper subset and here if we assume a to be a countable then it must be have a proper subset so this is every proper subset must be, but here we are getting that this cannot be a count so this shows that a is uncountable this shows a is uncountable a is uncountable okay so this is uh, uh, thing now one more th examples which we will deal is set of uh, number countable and other okay let's take uh, the few more that is hmm, uh, this example uh, as we have seen the interval 0 1 set of real numbers is not countable. Now, this we will prove it by using the decimal expansion. Suppose I take x any element of r, we can arrange this in the form of the sequence say x is in r, then we can write it, we can represent x represent x in the form of in its decimal expansion decimal we can write the decimal expansion for this so if x is something alpha 1 point say a1 a2 an and so on then this a1 a2 an and these are numbers different from 0 8 and 9. Okay. So, in order to repeat the whole uh, 9 and then what we do is we can construct the another numbers say first press a 1 we can replace it by a number which is not available here just change it just like a previous thing we did it a <coughs> s we have constructed sequence where we have replaced the first element uh, of the sequences by looking the s 1 if it is 1 we will take 0 if it is 0 it is 1. So, similarly here also we looked at and then replace it by a number which is not uh, out of this. So, that at least each element will differ from the constructed one. So, we will say it is not uh, I will uh, complete this thing next time. Thank you very much.